Good afternoon, everyone. This is another friendly reminder to wash your hands, stay six feet apart, and wear your mask. Thank you. So July 1st, 2019 seems like decades ago. And at that point, we made a commitment to you as our members that we would improve the quality of the food that we were providing every single client, that we would make sure that the quantity of food met their needs, and finally, that our service would improve. We started to hit some of those goals, and we started to make our, our mark forward on that. So our department, the Research and Advocacy Department, our role in the strategic plan this year was really to bring the right to food into our research and advocacy efforts. When we released Who's Hungry, our annual research report in November, this was the first year that we incorporated the right to food into that report. So that was a really important milestone for us as an organization as we move to the rights-based approach. So this year we also put out our first ever advocacy strategy and we're really grateful for all of the agencies like yourselves who participated in making that happen. You told us what were priorities to you through our member survey, through our consultations we held in February and March. Now we have an advocacy strategy that reflects the priorities of both our clients and our member agencies, tackling deep poverty, affordable housing, economic and social resiliency, and food access. So these are the four priorities that we felt were most important because they were the priorities that were reflected by our clients and by our agencies. These are the topics that really affect the lived experience of those clients who are coming to our programs and to all of your programs at agencies. They are the things that are keeping people in poverty and they're most likely to be producing food insecurity. This year in our business plan, our strategy is around increasing the number of grassroots organizations that we support. Grassroots organizations are ideal because they're rooted in the communities that they serve. They often have their ear to the ground, they're very nimble and responsive, they're trusted by the community. We've seen phenomenal growth over the past few years in grassroots organizations, particularly in Toronto community housing buildings. So we want to continue that strategy and increase our network through those organizations, as well as making investments in their capacity. The other thing we want to look at is supporting anchor agencies. So anchor agencies are members that we want to make significant investments in their capacity. We've learned we need to have stable pillars in the community to deliver food in times of crisis. So we would ask these agencies be able to maintain a high level of service and having the capacity to receive more food if required. Pre-COVID, the operations department was focused on distributing as much high quality food to our member agencies as possible. Inbounding food, warehousing food, sorting food with the help of our large community of volunteers and distributing food in a timely fashion. The operations team has consistently distributed an increased amount of food year over year to our member agencies. In the fiscal year ending 2019, we had distributed 10.8 million pounds of food to our member agencies. In the fiscal year ending 2020, that had increased to 12.4 million pounds of food. So I've been with the organization now for eight years and it's been my last year as chair, but since I first joined I've seen a major change in the organization just in terms of the level of sophistication and the level of uh, knowledge of how much food is coming in, what's going out, how we can better serve our member agencies and really listening to them. Being in a rights-based organization means that we listen to the people that we serve, sure. that we work with. So it means that we go out and we ask clients, what is important to you? What do you want to see change? We talk to our agencies and we find out, how's it going for you? What can we do differently? So it's having that feedback loop and most importantly from an advocacy perspective, it's holding government accountable. The right to food means that each and every person in Canada has the right 
not to be fed, but to be able to access the food that they need in dignity, with the agency to choose what food they want, to be able to afford the food that they need. So we need to hold government accountable to achieve that right to food. When we achieve the right to food, it means that no one goes hungry. It means that no one is living in food insecurity in Canada. And that's incredibly important because food insecurity leads to a whole host of health challenges. It leads to challenges um, in terms of childhood development all the way down the road. So it's really critical that people have nutritious, affordable, culturally appropriate food to be able to live healthy, dignified lives. When March 25th happened, once COVID hit, all things changed. And we started to have to make decisions about what was going on here at Daily Bread. There were a few restless nights. I often thought about what the systems were that had to be put in place. How do we distribute when there were so many agencies that could not distribute the food that they need? And how do we make sure that everybody is acting in a safe way? But then you just turn to, to the goal. What is the goal? The goal was that every single delivery go out on time. And we hit that goal. We hit that goal because we get to work every single day with a creative group of volunteers and staff who are fiercely dedicated to the mission and to people's right to food. And so they creatively came up with solutions and suddenly pop-up food banks were created. Suddenly there was partnerships with Corporate Canada. There were partnerships with, with agencies all across this city that meant that we were able to realize that goal. COVID hit, you know, all hands were on deck. We were trying to get food out the door. But from a research department perspective, we also started to stop and think, wait a minute, we need to know what's going on here with COVID. So that's why we went out and we started collecting data about what was happening uh, with food bank clients. At the same time, from an advocacy perspective, we knew that this was a very critical moment to be able to secure benefits and supports for individuals who are coming to food banks. Earlier in the year, Daily Bread reached out to us. They were asking, what is it that uh, grassroots agencies are in need of? And my response to that survey, you know, we needed more financial support. We needed more funding to be able to do more for the people in the community. With COVID and the release of the emergency funding, we were able to do um, a lot more for families. For parents with uh, young children wearing, wearing diapers, we were able to um, afford pampers. Um, baby foods uh, and so forth. So the funding did so much for the grassroots agencies, especially our agency. It was such an amazing thing to have this, this funding. We had new people coming out, a whole new crop of volunteers working together, collaborating just to deliver the service. People were very passionate about wanting to do something, help out and give back. Um, well, the work I do in the community, it's driven out of passion. That's the only way I can put it. It's in me. Even when I leave here, it doesn't end there. The community work has always been inside of me. Hello. DNO has been in operation for 35 years. It was birthed in the Thorncliffe community. When COVID hit for us, we just started receiving a flood of calls at the agency saying we need help with food. And one of the first decisions we made was um, we need to deliver. By March 23rd, we started the food program. We had never done emergency food relief prior to that. We had about 700 households in the system. We knew that at some point we needed to get connected to, to Daily Bread, both for access for food, but also for learning better how to do this type of work respectfully and the importance of, of dignity for people in accessing food is very, very central. And so we really felt that we could learn a lot from Daily Bread as well as gain, you know, access to food for the community. We're currently in a 70,000 square foot space that enables us to have significant physical distancing for people. Um, they're able to come in now very safely uh, and um, we can we can even sort of tailor boxes a little bit better for people. The, the key for us is we want to make sure we are providing people with the resources they need to heal, that they need to be able to get back on their feet. So we're very, very grateful to have been able to connect with Daily Bread. 
to help us figure out how we can more sustainably provide emergency food for people. What I love about Amir is, uh, you know, obviously he's passionate and skilled, really well networked, but he grew up in the neighborhood and still lives in the neighborhood. So can really speak from a lived experience, an ongoing lived experience of life in the community and people turn to him. No one really knew what was happening and how severe this disease was. Families didn't know where to go and because Daily Bread came through, we're able to continue food bank. So we invite all of our clients now to come in, get registered into Daily Bread's database. Omar, would you be able to help Lucia, please? And then they can help themselves. Kids can enjoy treats. They'll go around, they'll pick what they want, and you can see they're a lot happier. And because of Daily Bread uh, really coming in to support us, we're able to continue to support this community. The environment that Storefront is in is, is like a smaller community. So a lot of the locals use this as a very resource area for coming to the park and walking around. They also got to know this as a very safe place for people to come. And a lot of them have been coming here for over 40 plus years. It's been a place of knowing that this is where you come for help, but also a place that you could come and just sort of be with us. So that was important for a lot of people. Starting in March, when, when the, everybody became very aware of the changes that were going to maybe be taking place and the fear around that, we would phone and communicate with people directly on the phone, but we also still provided meals to them. Daily Bread has allowed us to provide more meals, um, healthier meals, because a lot of the food that we were able to pick up on Friday from Daily Bread has been selected for us. I think they get to know who our clients are. And so from the warehouse to the front office, they, we've built quite a relationship with those folks. And so that's been a, a great comfort to me that I know every Friday going there that I'm going to get the food that is actually usable and I can pass through to our, our very needy people in our community. When COVID happened, the operations team knew that we needed to step up to meet the demand that we knew would be coming to your member agencies. We have seen an increase of 40% clients and it's our team's responsibility to make sure that we are distributing food to each and every client that comes to visit a Daily Bread agency. So we made money available to agencies. One way was through grants. We provided different grants, infrastructure grants, capacity building grants, heat mitigation grants. We had to suspend service to meal programs for a brief period at the beginning of the crisis. We were able to offset that by providing them cash in lieu of the products that we would normally purchase on their behalf. What worried me at the height of the crisis was when is it going to end in terms of numbers, in terms of food insecurity. We're seeing incredible increases in the number of people accessing food programs and wondering what that ceiling was going to be and would we be able to meet uh, that demand. There have been some outstanding examples of meeting the challenge, particularly during COVID, particularly seeing agencies who have seen a rise of 300% in terms of the number of clients that they have served. The ones that have been able to do that, acting with volunteers and the community as a whole to be able to make sure that everybody's right to food is realized is really what stands out to me. Advocacy is a core pillar of Daily Bread's mission. In addition to getting food out the door, we push for those long-term solutions to end poverty and food insecurity. And without that on-the-ground understanding of what those issues are, how it impacts people, that's the most critical element of effective advocacy work. So it's that connection with our agencies that help us do that. There are staff that are here, and there are heroes who are volunteers. Those are the women and men who said, during this pandemic, I want to and I need to do something for my community. And to each volunteer, I simply want to say thank you. Daily Bread is a network, and so when we are meeting the needs of member agencies, of clients that we serve, that's how we know that we're successful. We are here, and our commitment is that we will be there for you throughout this pandemic. I know I speak on behalf of every member of the leadership team and the staff when I say that we are here for you as agencies. That means that we are going to make sure that the right food and the
the right quantities of food are delivered to you. That means that we will act as your advocate and the client's advocate to make sure that the systemic changes that are required at all levels of government are implemented. Because fundamentally, we care about you, we care about the agencies, and we care about a Canada where everybody's right to food is realized.